Michael with Sailors with Cars. We've got another great interview today. Uh, I want to welcome Jeff Davis with us. Jeff's brought out his Audi. Uh, we're going to talk about the Audi. We're going to talk about Jeff's uh, car club. But first and foremost, I want to thank everybody for subscribing to the channel. The channel is growing every week, and I really appreciate that. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please watch a video, subscribe to the channel, uh, like us, uh, go on the Facebook page, like us on there, comment. If you'd like to get an interview done, either contact me at michael at sailorswithcars.com. You can go on the webpage, sailorswithcars.com, and sign up there, uh, or call me, 619-728-6040, uh, and I'll set an interview up. So, Jeff, thanks. No problem. Appreciate you coming out. Let's talk about your military time just a little bit here because it is Sailors with Cars. And Jeff is a sailor. Uh, Jeff told me he's got uh, 18 years in the Navy. Uh, Jeff, when did you enlist? When did you first come in? Uh, December 12, 2000. I came in from right here in Sherman Oaks up north in LA County. Really? Boot camp in San Diego? No, no, no boot camp was in Great Lakes. Great Lakes, sorry. That would be me going to San Diego boot camp many years ago. <laughs> uh, you told me you were a uh, IT in, yeah. in the non military world. That would be uh, computers, stuff like that. You know, I deal with people that need help not understanding computers or, or you know, know helping them map their printers, you know, that type of stuff. Or, you know, fixing computers. Alright. Uh, what ships were you on? Uh, my very first ship, I was on board the USS Kitty Hawk. In Kitty, the, what year? That I was on there, I checked on board 2003. 2003. But right. I was only on board for, <clears throat> what, three, four months maybe at the most. So you were in Japan? Yeah. Yeah. Yakuska. Yeah, so I did two tours on her um, here in San Diego, 94 to 96, and then I was MPA on her from uh, I don't know, six to eight. Oh, okay. I'm deconquer. That I would have been on there then, but uh, yeah, I did nerve damage in my knee, so uh -huh. I, got, I got taken off and I was there. And then uh, once I got off of Lindu, <clears throat> limited duty, I uh, got stationed on board the USS Gary. Okay. There in Yokosuka as well. Sure, sure. Okay, um, so what was the last ship you were on before you went to shore duty? Uh, the USS Hopper, uh, or Pearl Harbor. Got it. Did you spend a lot of, uh, so have you done a lot of your career in San Diego, or overseas, or Hawaii, or where did you spend the uh, majority of your time? Mostly overseas. Overseas. Um, I, I count Hawaii as overseas, kind of, because it's not mainland. A lot of people do, yeah. Uh, I, I actually went, <clears throat> I guess you could basically see I actually went just about ten and a half years without coming back mainland. Really? I didn't. I just didn't want to. Wow, <laughs> I was, you know, I was having fun. You know, I was enjoying life. And why is a nice place to be? You can't complain yeah, about that. Yeah. I was there for six and a half years. That's a long time. A lot of people get rock fever. Uh, I was there for three. <laughs> that was enough for me. Um, yeah, uh, I, I like to go back on vacation. Living there a long period of time, not so much. <laughs> Um, so 18 years, so you're doing the 20 year retire, or are you going to go a little bit more? 22. 22. 22 as of right now. Um, obviously, if I make chief, then probably 24. Sure. Do uh, that. And if I make more, then further. But play it by ear for now. Yeah. No. See where it goes. No, nothing wrong with that. Planning it out. Um, what was the first car you had when you uh, joined the Navy? Uh, so actually, I didn't have a car in the Navy until well, until I got to Hawaii. So that was seven years in. Wow. Yeah, my first tour was in Washington D.C. Didn't need a car there. Their sure. subway system and everything is great. So, and then I went to Japan for four and a half years. Don't so need a car there. Don't want a car there. there. Yeah, not at all. And then I got to Hawaii and uh, needed a car definitely. And uh, my first one that I bought there was a uh, 2000 Volkswagen Sub. Okay. And got the bug right away. Sure. <laughs> Started doing this stuff, you know, and modding and everything and making friends that were in the car community and stuff like that. And it just started a whole path that I'm on now. So let's talk about, let's talk about your car club involvement as long as we're in the, because you told me you joined in Hawaii, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. So talk a little bit about your about your club that you belong to and uh, what they do and um, name of it. So the club is Team Foreign Objects. Okay. They started in Hawaii in 2003. And it was um, the original president, 
uh, Gaunt, we call him, that's his nickname. Uh, he's, him and a friend started the club, and they just wanted, you know, friends to get together that had the same hobby, you sure. know, the same enthusiasm towards uh, Volkswagen, mainly, okay. the European cars. And um, fa family oriented, definitely it was a goal that they had. You know, it, not just, you know, going out to shows, winning shows, anything like that. Helping each other out, um, doing events together, and just getting together and, you know, making people feel welcome. Okay. And being as they're in Hawaii, they do get a lot of military, you know, that want to join, you know, stuff like that. And very animate about, you know, don't be dumb, street racing, stuff like that. Oh, nice. You know, good, you good. Know, just, it, it's not smart. You know, and everybody has fun. It's understandable. So, you know, it's, you know, you got to play it smart when dealing with the younger people. You sure. Know, stuff like that. Uh, I joined in 2007, I believe it was. I'm drawing a blank on the year I joined. But I've been, obviously, a member for quite a while. Sure. Um, <clears throat> and did a lot of events with the club, stuff like that in Hawaii. Um, there's a lot of old school air cools and stuff um, that run around Hawaii and stuff like that. So the presence there is very big, just car community in general. Sure. Um, oh yeah. And then, um, is there a local chapter here in San Diego? Yes, I'm the president of the got, local chapter. Kind of figures you were. And I started it because I I was the this was the first chapter that was outside of Hawaii. Oh, okay. Well, outside of Hawaii as a whole. All right. Because there are chapters on now. On other islands. Yeah. Sure. Um, and I, I came over here and our president was still in Hawaii at the time. He lives in Vegas now. He moved. But um, so I came over here and I asked him, I was like, you know, can I start a chapter? You know, ex expand, you know, a little bit. And um, he said, yeah, sure, go for it. You know, it was a slow start. Yeah, like but um, I got got it started, you know, and we're only roughly ten members here in SoCal. So how long? But when did you start? I started the chapter here uh, four years ago. Okay. And um, as our presence has grown, we actually we have a chapter in the Pacific Northwest okay. that. A member didn't start. It was actually somebody reached out to us, you know, because they had been following the club for a while and everything, and they said, hey, I want to join and start my own chapter. Oh, nice. So it was, you know, we're even members or people outside of, you know, members of the club are seeing us and, you know, seeing how, what, what type of club we are. And um, so we have club, our chapters in Pacific Northwest, Oregon, Washington, chapters in Vegas. Georgia, <clears throat> we have members in Oklahoma, Germany, Japan, we have a whole chapter in Japan. Wow. That also was started not by a member, but by somebody else that so saw us. So, in Japan, is it, is, it a, is it a base military associated club, or is it local? It's, out, it's local outside. Local outside club. Oh, nice. Nice. Well, that's good. Now, do you guys do rallies, meetups, um, coffee and cars? What, what's your guys' thing? We, we do cars and coffee. Um, a lot of the shows that we do more that we get a lot of mem a lot of our members that come out to and stuff like that is um, like Big SoCal Euro, which is in September at Qualcomm. Okay. And um, that huge event. Um, any of the major events that go on, like next month, there's another event that's happening on June twentieth, July twentieth. But um, you guys just show up and represent. Yes, okay. and that's when a lot of us get together. Otherwise, um, my vice president, Alex, lives up in Temecula, and he's a Marine. And a lot, a lot, a lot, of, times, <laughs> a lot of times we'll meet up at their house because they, they have a nice house up there, a big backyard and everything, you know, we'll barbecue oh, and nice. stuff like that. We'll, um, me and him do, I don't even know how many we've done, but we'll do air ride installs on cars and stuff up there. Fix oh, that's cars, nice. Help okay. guys out. Yeah, that's all right. No, that's okay. I was going to ask if you guys do that. Good. Yeah. Nice. So I've got to ask. So today, maybe excluding this fine vehicle, <laughs> what, what is your favorite car today? 
Of mine or just in general? Just in general. Um, oh, geez. Can you nail it down to one? Not so much, no. Um, I know me and the wife, we both want a 2004 uh, Mark IV Volkswagen R32. Okay. That's a dream car for both of us that we want just because it's a rarer car in a sense for the Volkswagens. Sure. And then it's just, it's, I had, my one I had before this was the next generation of that. So that was the white one that, uh, was that? Yes. Yes. And for you that follow it on Facebook, Jeff is nice. Huh? Jeff's wife is a professional photographer. Um, you want to give a little shout out to your wife's site? Uh, Ill-inspired images. Ill-inspired images, which is uh, go on it, beautiful shots. Anyhow, Jeff had sent me some pictures of this vehicle and the other vehicle he had, and I put it on the uh, Facebook page. Uh, very nice looking vehicle, so check it out uh, and take a look at it. So speaking of vehicles, this 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 beautiful machine <laughs> right here. Let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, it's a 2016 Audi SQ5. Okay. I had wanted one for a while, so we literally bought it on a whim. <laughs> um, both of our cars were paid off, and it was a Sunday, and I asked. Asked Tisha, I was like, you know, you, you want to go look at cars? Or excuse me, no, it was a Saturday because she was at work. But uh, <clears throat> I asked her, you want to go look at cars after work? You know, just, you know, do something on a Saturday afternoon. And we saw this one and we saw the interior and that was the drawing in factor, you know, because it's got the diamond stitch seats and everything like that. And uh, went down, looked at it, took it for a test drove and drove it home that day. <laughs> wow. So. <laughs> You've, and we'll talk about it, you have, of course, modified this vehicle a um, lot. Uh, not, yes, but not a lot. Really? I mean, it's, well, you know what? I wouldn't say a lot. Let's walk <laughs> around it and let's take a look at it. Yeah, no problem. All right. All right, so it came stock with a three liter supercharged TFSI motor. Um, as you can see, supercharger here. Uh, Hold on, Jeff. Let me get let me get in there. I, I'm no professional. <laughs> Got to get in here. That's a beautiful engine. Okay, one more one more time. Supercharger is. It's a three liter supercharged TFSI motor. Um, first weekend I had it, we did a tune on the ECU through uh, from United Motorsports. Okay. And we did the the intake on it from CTS Turbo. And we did the lower fluid damper pulley, which is 189 millimeter pulley, which is roughly 30 millimeters over stock, okay. diameter wise. Um, future plans obviously are to do the upper pulley on the supercharger itself, go to a smaller diameter, so the rotational mass is different. Um, just recently installed the APR, or excuse me, not APR, the uh, AWE cold front system which is a supercharger uses a heat exchanger, uh, which is basically an intercooler. Sure. Um, so it's bigger mass and sucks in more cold air basically. Oh, nice. And then just recently we divorced the system and added a cooling system for the supercharger itself for with this reservoir. So the supercharger has its own cooling now versus being tied in with the rest of the motor. Wow. So with that done, so what was the initial horsepower um, do you know, or, or how much, did, how much more did you get out of it doing what you've done? Uh, I was told it will be roughly around 450, between 450 and 500 if I'm running E85. Okay. So, but I haven't dynoed it or anything to actually sure. know those numbers. That's sure. a lot. <laughs> she, you know, I mean, that's no joke. She's quick. It's not a frick. It's not a frick V8 sitting in there. You she's, know. She's quick. She's no, quick. and you'll see from the uh, the sound that we took of it. Uh, we tried to catch the supercharger and the exhaust, but uh, we'll have to see how that works out. But it, it's got a hell of a sound to it. All right, what else? What about these uh, wheels and tires? These are pretty so, damn nice. The wheels. Um, I just recently did. They're Ferrata FR4s, 22 by 10 and a half. Uh, with an ET28, 28 offset, um, and they're wrapped in Toyo Proxies 265, 35, 22s. Nice. So I wanted the the profile to be nice. Um, not, I didn't really want to stretch or anything on it. 
but I still wanted it to have not a, a monster tire profile. So it's definitely got that. These gave me the, uh, the profile that I wanted for it to sit correctly and everything like that. And then I did the gloss black lips with the brushed bronze face just because I was trying to stick with the black, but I wanted the bronze just as a little bit of an offset. Now it's nice. Can we take a look at the inside? Yeah. Yeah, it's so nice. It is the prestige package. So it has the diamond stitch seats, um, the full moon roof, which I absolutely love. Yeah. I, I never open it really, but I love it. <laughs> yeah, our, our Jag has that. I really like it. I'm like you though, I never open it. And then um, I love the seats. I installed the, the air ride controller right in the center console. Can you go around to the other side and point that out for us? Because I will not know what I'm looking at. <clears throat> so the Air Ride is the Airlift 3P system. This is the controller for it. Um, I'll show you the back in a bit with the compressors and everything. Um, otherwise, I haven't really done anything interior wise. Oh, it's beautifully uh, clean though. That, I did full LEDs on all the lights and everything, but that's just, you know, you can't really no, it's beautiful. I mean, it's like new. Of course, you take very well. I I love a guy or gal that keeps a clean car. I'm all about that. That's for damn sure. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, let's look at that air ride system. Let me get around here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we were looking at this earlier. I was like, holy God. <laughs> look at that thing. So we did the, uh, the air ride setup we did in my, my friend's garage as well. It's a five gallon seamless tank, um, two 480 cc compressors to fill up the five gallon tank. Um, roughly, give or take a minute, depending on how much I'm using it, the compressors will take to fill up the tank. Got it. So, so let me ask you, if you don't mind me telling, mm -hmm. how much does the, it just the air ride system cost if somebody was um, gonna put this in a vehicle? It, it depends. Okay. You can get it used for, you know, in between a thousand to two thousand, but overall, this full setup cost us just over three thousand. Not cheap. And I then would, you've got the uh, club. Uh, yep. Nice. We we'll get a close up on that. Try to. It's kind of hard on the tank. And then that's that's one of the reasons that also me and my vice president Alex we do we try and do installs and stuff to help people because so, install can be expensive. Oh yeah. You know, so if we know how to do it. And you know, and you know what you're doing, of course, yeah. that that's the big thing. Guys show up, he's got, Hey Jeff, I've got all this stuff. I don't have a, I want it to do what yours does, but I don't have a clue. Yeah. We don't do it so much anymore just cause it's time consuming, you know? And so do you want to, uh, do you want to start it up and, uh, sure. let me, uh, you know, we got plenty of ventilation in here. I think we're good. Go ahead and oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead and fire it up. So uh, Jeff's going to demonstrate the. Uh, let me step back here so I get a good uh, shot of it. We'll go through the uh, air ride capability of it. Oh yeah, nice. Nice. justice uh, I can't say I, I don't know that I've ever ridden in a uh, Audi SUV to be honest with you um, it's surprisingly comfortable vehicles it, I, I like it a lot it is it's roomy but it's not too big I, I love the diamond uh, the diamond stitch leather um, let's just go straight you know we'll just go up a little bit here uh, yeah so you said this is a 2016 yes and how many miles were on it when you bought it? Uh, just over 20,000 when I bought it. Oh, wow. I bought it just over a year ago now, so. Yeah, well, like the rest of us, I'm sure you enjoy the uh, California registration fees that go along with it. I don't pay them. What? Yeah. Oh, yes. 
registering in a active duty military in, a, in another state. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's registering in Oregon. There you go. I'm waiting for my plates right now. There you go. Yeah, I did the same thing. My uh, 28 years, every vehicle was registered in Montana. Uh, didn't, didn't pay any state tax and uh, I didn't pay any uh, registration fees. It saves you a lot of money. You're damn right it does. Well, let me just tell you. I just renewed the registration on the Porsche, which is a 2017. 653 lovely dollars back to my good state, California. Yeah, even my son who drives a 04 Malibu, uh, $131 for that thing. And of course, uh, the 50 or 60 bucks to smog it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, whatever, it's the way it, it's the way it is. It's the way it is. Um, yeah, it's very nice. It's very nice. So this has got all the bells and whistles in it, of course. Uh, for the most part, it doesn't have like the. Um, there's actually like a carbon fiber trim package you can get for all of this stuff. Is it really? Yeah. Which I wish I had. Yeah. But whatever. Um, that adds a lot of money. I'm gonna. I'm gonna deal with this. I'm gonna wrap it. You know, I did that in the Jag. Um, so I went up. So I had mine wrapped at. Uh, I use. Uh, uh, five Point Auto Spa, which I always think is a, a funny name. But anyhow, they do wonderful work there. Um, uh, Adam Cote is the person that owns it. And uh, so the Jag is 80% wrapped with the clear bra material. And we did the, uh, he recommended doing the uh, the inside because it's got the, it's not fake wood, but it's got the wood kind of uh, interior. The doors yeah, yeah, yeah. So we wrapped all that. He goes, well, you know, you're going to keep the car for a while. You just will put the, the coating on that to keep anything from scratch. He makes it easier to clean. And then the other thing he'd recommended was on the black between the window uh, posts on the door frame. Yep. We put it on there and cause we, we were talking about, it doesn't matter how clean you keep the car, you always have what looks like fine scratches, even though you've never scratched it and you don't put anything abrasive on it, it just shows up in that, yep. in that whatever that plasticky material is. He says, if we put the clear coat on here, that'll alleviate that whole problem. And we did, and it's not there. Yeah, uh, I and, and I to, love that. I need to get this in and get it. I would recommend, uh, and I'm not a sponsored channel, but uh, <laughs> he, he does a he, he does a great job up there. He's got two locations now. There's one in uh, the the original one is on Kearney Villa, and the other one's in Carlsbad. But uh, the one at Kearney Villa, yeah, if you just call them up and make an appointment, they'll give you an estimate. And as you know, none of that stuff's cheap. Yeah. Um, you know, a full wrap on this thing. Uh, and once again, I'm no wrapper guy, uh, literally. Probably around uh, three thousand. Three to four, probably, yeah. um, is what it'll run you. But it's good material. He uses a clear bra material. He is the distribution for that. Uh, and it, it's just good stuff. I just had the hood on the Jag redone because, of course, the clear bra did what it was supposed to do. A big old rock hit it. Took a chunk of the clear bra out, but not a chunk of my paint. Uh, so we, of course, had to redo the hood, which isn't cheap, but better. Yeah, take okay. a left. Better than uh, re repainting a damn hood. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, you're clear on this side. There we go. Yeah, it's got a quick shift to it. I like it. Jack's got the sport mode, the hoo hoo mode. Does this? Uh, yep, it has uh, sport mode, it has manual mode. Sure. Uh, the paddle shifters. The paddle shifters. But it's still just a. Uh, what is it? Um, I don't remember the name of it. But um, it's uh, still just a, an eight speed automatic transmission, basically. Got it. So it's not like the, uh, the S4s, the S5s, and stuff. They come with DSG. Sure, the, the double. Uh, well, like on Porsche, they have the uh, the uh, the PDK transmissions, yeah, um, quicker shifting transmission. Yeah, mine is manual, so uh, you shift as quick as you can shift. That's <laughs> what it is. And I bought it that way because I wanted the six speed. But uh, the Jag has got a pretty good uh, transmission in it for when you're in sport mode. Uh, it'll zip and do dog right along. Wife doesn't appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, my my wife, you know, she is always on me. You know. 
no. know, be mindful no. of what you're doing. You no, know? no, really? <laughs> so we were, we were going to mention this, but uh, Jeff did a little drive-by, and I'm not sure if I really got it on camera, but uh, doing uh, some pretty good clicks past the house there. The, uh, you know, the old Audi's got some pickup there. A little, little, little tire squealing going on there. It, uh, it catches people off guard. That's why my custom plate I got from Oregon is actually is a, is a NPR KLR. Mopar killer. Mopar killer. <laughs> nice. Because uh, like when they do, nice. uh, if they bring it back anyways, don't know yet, but they did race legal. I don't know if you knew about that. The the drag races at Qualcomm. Really? Yeah. I did not know that. Uh, and hopefully they're maybe bringing it back. But um, yeah, you can go down there and do the drag races and stuff. And I have an, another buddy of mine that has a 14 SQ5. And he's a lot faster than I am, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, go down there and just kill just about everything on the track. It's, it's nice. Fun. <laughs> uh, Porsche does autocrosses there yep. uh, where you can do your own time. Yeah. Um, I've not done it, but uh, yeah. Very nice. Very yeah, even nice. the, uh, you know, for being on basically rubber filled airbags, you know, for suspension, it's. I love how it rides. And no, it's, you know, it's comfortable. Well, I love the sound of it too. I hope the camera's picking up the sound. It's just. Yeah, that's nice. I like that. I'll be quiet and let it's, it do its thing. It's very smooth. Um, I, it's my first supercharged car. I fell in love with the supercharger. Yep. The Jag is mine <laughs> first. Uh, and when I bought it, I was like, oh, it's supercharged? Really? Yeah, it's, oh, okay. It's, there's no spooling. It's just instant no. power. You know, it's, it's a whole different feel. Um, yeah, the, in the Porsche, of course, it's 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 uh, turbo, and yeah, you get you get a lag, but once again, it's a manual, so the lag is limited. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we're back. Sailors with cars. Sorry, fly going by here. I want to thank Jeff Davis for coming out with his uh, Audi Q5, beautiful car. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I don't know how you couldn't. Uh, the car is just it's unbelievable. You've done a great job with it. Thank you. Uh, once again, I really appreciate you coming up here. Um, I really do because uh, I, I'm looking for people all the time because uh, we want to grow the channel and grow the brand. Once again, this is not, for anybody watching, this is not a financial thing at all. This is a promote the military, promote the military vehicles, uh, just trying to do something nice, let people show their vehicles off and talk about them. That, that's what we're all about here. It's it, it, there's no hidden agenda to this channel at all. I appreciate everybody that spends the time. They don't get paid. They get a, they get a hat. <laughs> sir? Thank you much, sir. Thank you for coming out. I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. So once again, Michael, Sailors with Cars, subscribe to the channel. Uh, next week we're going to have, I believe, a 57 Apache, if uh, everything works out well. I need a car after that, though. I uh, don't have anything on the books, people. So help me out. Message me something. Just give me a call that we can interview. Okay? See you next time. Thanks.